Hi everyone. Um, I'm in a different car. Mine's gone in to go and get fixed from the lady crashing uh, into the side of it. Um, and this is the higher car. It's not a dual control car, but it's uh, it's a pretty big thing. It's a Volvo XC60. It's quite nice to be honest. Um, I've not driven it loads, but it did promise in a recent video. Um, about reading more than a signal that I was going to do a drive like an instructor video on what I'm signaling for and who it benefits. So that's simply what we're going to do today. I think I'm all set up and all ready. Um, let's get it started and we will get working. Um, so this Volvo, it's um, probably all singing, all dancing. It's, I think it's the inscription one. Um, it's a two litre turboed petrol. It's about 250 brake horsepower, so it's um, it's pretty quick, but that's not what we're all about. Um, I must admit, it's quite strange for me sitting in this high up seating position. Um, it's, it's not something that I've been used to for a while. We used to have um, or well, my missus used to have a Range Rover, so I, I do know about the, the high up seating position, but um, it seems quite strange. Now, straight to the signals there, often I wouldn't signal there, but because of all those cars parked and there was a little bit of movement from those people in front, I put a signal on, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today, so I'll stop rambling about the car. Um, I think we're all okay temperature-wise and everything else. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about signals, who I'm signaling to and how it affects them. And this is really, really important. You, you can't just get into a routine manner of signaling because then your signals aren't gonna be um, sorted out at the correct time all the time. So here, you look front and back, there is absolutely, well, now there's someone to signal to. And there's a guy over here to the right hand side and there's a vehicle coming out of the other road on the left. So would there be an issue with putting a signal on all the time? No. If you're on a driving test, um, I would probably suggest that every junction I would put one on because to get to this level of driving, um, it would probably take you a lot, lot longer, but it's something you should all aspire to. So I'm going to go ahead here technically it is a right turn but a right signal would be misleading so if i was to put a right signal i'm sure people would think that i was going to go and park over there on the right hand side so no signal was required in that scenario let's just wipe the back window i don't have one of them in uh, my three series so it's a little bit strange to uh, be able to see out the back window so what we're gonna be doing is looking at each situation on its own merits. And what I'm gonna try and do here is show this forward from the opposite direction. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the entrance, not driving on a pavement, but use a little bit of the entrance of these two. You don't have to flash to say thanks, buddy. And I'm gonna sit still as well, because there's a guy in the road with a, uh, a wheelbarrow. There's a Nissan Juke coming the other way. I'm just aware with my position of people thinking behind that I'm parked in but there's no one to signal to. That guy in front isn't looking like he's moving, so there's no reason for me to tell anyone. And that's what we should always be about. I'm gonna turn left at the lights. Yes, a signal would be of benefit, um, but actually only to vehicles coming the other way, turning. There's no one behind. So it's a benefit to the learner. Not the best turn by the learner. It's a good job that I was holding back. Um, so what I was getting at there was my left signal could be seen through the space of the side, pavement side, from that learner's perspective. So that's why the signal was particularly important, but it was quite possible that the learner was only looking at the vehicle in front. I call it locking on. I'm sure you've heard me say that before. Signal to go around parked cars? Absolutely not. Um, if I was driving a bus or a lorry, that may very well be a benefit. Now, we do have an emergency service vehicle coming up, uh, which is really good. So I'm just gonna not uh, instantly react. I'm just keeping an eye on it. Now, there's a few parked cars here. So I'm just gonna put a left signal on, show the Mini what we're doing. 
and just leave plenty of space. But I'm going to keep it rolling. Do I need to signal to come out? Only if someone was being an idiot and trying to overtake. It's a given, really, that you should be able to pull in and then move back out in the same position that you were in. So, signal to move out there wasn't necessary. Signal mo to move back in, no, again, it's a given. So people signal for every single movement and you don't need to. Okay, so we had a little bit of an extra um, scenario there with the ambulance, the emergency services, uh, which was perfect, to be honest. It was um, a good little example. Notice how I'm not gonna go into problems. I'm going to um, always leave space for them to go through. The signal um, at the correct time was important there for the vehicle that was following us, this Mini, because I've, I'd put it on too early. You may have thought that we were parking, so remember, a signal a good signal should only ever mean one thing. Now, this guy to the right-hand side, he's giving me a little bit of a signal without indicating. The car's turning. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna manage where's best for him to fit in. It's his, um, his thing to deal with, but I'm not gonna be an idiot and make it worse. I'm gonna make it better for the flow. That sometimes means going in front sometimes means I'm gonna drop back, but we're just gonna look at it. The one behind has done the same thing. But just with his position away, it's similar, we had an incident with someone um, throwing mm. something at my car. Now, where's he going? He's looking in his mirror, there you go. And hazards aren't for that use, everyone. Hazards, it's a common thing that people stick the hazards on to say thanks personally. It's not a massive deal, but don't do it to park in because people are absolutely confused. You're better off putting an actual signal on to show people specifically what you're doing and where you're going. All right, so um, yeah, that moved on to other people's signals a little bit, um, but there's no in the world that you should ever be confusing. That's what I was getting on to uh, when we said about the ambulance. So uh, my signal here is showing the bus. If we were behind the bus that I'm not gonna overtake, you can do that with your positioning. I'm gonna keep an eye on that Peugeot if I'm near him, anywhere further up, because he's obviously that type of driver. It's no problem. You, you're not gonna get the perfect drivers all around all the time. But if there's someone who's gonna cause you a bigger problem, I call it friend or foe, um, you can uh, be more mindful of them. Uh, learner drivers, we've seen, do make mistakes, so always be ready for them. Now I'm gonna turn right at these traffic lights. My position is enough at the moment, and the indication um, will be put on when it's suitable. I would probably say after the bus, it's then plenty of time for the oncoming traffic to pick up who's turning right in front of them. The green filter has gone off, so I'm just going to go into the box in the middle and wait because they're going to be on the move. Are you allowed to wait in a yellow box like this? Absolutely are if your exit's clear and you only stop from doing so by oncoming traffic. So people often uh, don't know the rules about these yellow boxes. The signal still needs to be on. It's still creating a warning um, to the oncoming traffic, although me sitting still and doing nothing with my speed is probably stopping that potential problem for them, but it, it's creating a warning to say, these are the vehicles who could be turning in front. Volkswagen's ju not jumping, learner's finished. Checking all around, and again, checking the mirrors before a turn, we've seen that massively over the last number of months. Do I need to signal to move around the um, post office van? Absolutely not. An early position's enough. I think I was saying that a little bit before about, I was, about uh, bigger vehicles moving around parked obstructions could be a benefit because people behind can't see those parked obstructions. But when you're driving uh, a normal car, I know this is a little bit bigger, so 
may be appreciative of that, but when you're driving a, a normal car, just to move round park cars, if no one's overtaking, no issues, no problems in the slightest. Again, we've got someone up ahead with their hazards on. Those hazards could be a benefit if I couldn't see that car. It's parked. Why do people put hazards on to say they're parked? If we couldn't see the vehicle, if it was invisible, those hazard lights would be a benefit. But other than that, no. Now, I'm going to do a straight on at this roundabout. So, left lane's fine, both lanes fine. No signal on the approach. You do not need to right signal to go around because that could confuse people. I wanted to go into this lane. So there's no right signal whatsoever. And there's a nice space for me to take. But the signal that I'm going to put on is now. And in that scenario, I could have probably got away with it because there was no one coming out of this road when I was exiting. And that's who it helps when you're leaving roundabouts. It helps the people generally coming out of the junction that you're going in. So you should try and signal to help those people. But if you're really good, you could do your observations. So therefore, um, you could be specific or situational with that signal not routine honestly in my opinion the mirror signal maneuver routine can be big problems for people yes you should follow that routine but people are too rigid with it it's flexible it's movable for example here i'm going to turn left at the lights and what people will do is they'll check and put a signal on now no way in the world now all i'm going to do is just hold back and just let this uh, golf out i'm not flashing i was keeping it aware of uh, my right hand mirror there. So going back to what I was saying, um, people go mirror signal and they would have had that signal on before that side road. And it's because it's done in that routine manner. So thinking about who you're signaling for and how it affects them makes your observations at a higher level. Okay. Land Rover's moving away to the right. Where's he gonna go? Is he gonna do a U-turn? Nope. That's all good. Must admit, you've probably not seen, well, you haven't seen me use the handbrake or parking brake in this vehicle. Um, it's got an automatic one. It's a cracker. Um, so much nice tech to it. It's. Uh, it's got massage seats, cooled seats, heated seats. Um, it's got a lot of safety, uh, safety devices on these Volvos. And I've been really impressed with it as well. It's, for me, it's quite understated as well. It sits under that radar um, of not being uh, too flash, but you've got a nice bit of kit. So, would I, would I have one of these? Mm, probably would. Not yet though. So, Signals, I'm going to go and try and do a few roundabouts and give people an idea with signals. Um, notice as well that the signals that I'm giving even when I'm letting people out of junctions like I did with a lady come from the side road before, notice I'm trying my utmost to only mean one thing. And that's again problematic with people who put the signals on routinely. They have to be to each scenario. And to do that, your observations have to be on a different level. People always say, well, I'm putting my signals on anyway, and I still look. You don't look at this intensity and this level if you're just routinely signaling. I promise you, it doesn't work like that. So we've got a roundabout. I'm gonna take the uh, second exit left. So I can't signal again on the approach. I'm using my brake lights as a signal. The Audi behind is not a big deal, so that's all okay. And again, I'm positioning my car to the left, so people have got an idea of where I'm going with my uh, with my position. What signal is that one putting on the left? But I wasn't really looking at that. I'm going to signal left now for these coming out. That helps them emerge. Um, but I wasn't really looking at the car's signal too much. I was looking at its 
at, at its position in relation to the roundabout. And as it left the inside of the roundabout, I'm not sure whether we'll, whether we'll be able to see it on dash cam, but um, as it left the inside of the roundabout, I knew it was exiting. So signals are actually, like I said in the other video, less important than you realize. What signal did it give the guy? Not to rush. Backed off early as he was crossing the road. Even though I had priority, I didn't steam into that situation. I'm going to turn left at these lights now. I'm going to put my signal on as late as I can. Who needs it at the minute? Does the vehicle in front need it? No, they can't move forward. There's going to be a lot of people freaking out at this very minute. It's not affecting anyone absolutely no one and if you understand this about the signals it will help you put your signals on at the correct point is there anyone maybe now just for a little bit just in case one of these vehicles to my right is thinking about moving back into my lane that's the only reason why a signal not affecting anyone here there's no one there it's not affecting anyone coming in didn't affect the dog walker he was walking straight across so <laughs> If you think that you've got to put that signal on at that set distance away from any particular junction, you're wrong. You could, but it's not going to suit every situation. Okay. So, it's quite ironic really, um, that the first time I do something like this, it's the first time I'm out of my BMW. No, I'm not going to keep pushing that. Um, what I actually find is that, as I said in the other video, that people are um, insistent on saying you didn't signal, you didn't signal, you didn't signal, because they think it's that routine signal that, that, is, that is the best way to do it. And it's not, as hopefully I've explained in a previous video, and what we're doing with this. Now, I'm going to go ahead at the roundabout again. Um, do I need to signal to give myself a little bit of space in my lane? No. If you're manoeuvring within your lane, as long as it's safe for me, just manoeuvre. If someone's um, going to be close to you, sound, you, you might need a signal if you're popping it into their lane. So, ahead. What's the white van doing? He's leaving, so I'm going. So you don't wait for signals. You look at position. My signal, it helps these coming out again. Does it help the cars behind me at all? Absolutely not. Because a roundabout flows. And to be truthful there, if I'm going ahead at a roundabout and I'm in the left lane, I couldn't go past that junction really anyway. So personally, the, the amount of benefit in that situation for a signal is actually negligible if people are doing the correct things. So if people followed the rules and did the correct thing, um, it's actually less important than you realise. So ahead here is the third exit. Because it's the third exit, I do not need the right lane. So don't anyone think that it's the number of exits that choose your lane on the approach, apart from spiral roundabouts. So again, not signalling at this one, not on the approach. I'm going ahead and looking for other people's positions and speed. Can't sit very well. Oh, I can't see very well. Can. I can see through it. So I'm just holding back, letting this uh, private hire in front, seeing where the golf is behind. And it's quite tight and I've got a big car, so I'm just watching him carefully. Her, sorry. Yep. And I am going to turn right at the next roundabout, so we do need the right lane. Signal to move across helps her time her slow down. A cancel of the signal and then a reapply shows people I'm definitely turning right and I haven't just forgotten about my signal. And then we're off. So the right signal is important here. So if it clicks off, I put it back on because it helps the pedestrian know I'm going over here and all the vehicles coming out where the red Ford and the Fiat are coming from. And then the left signal, I'm putting it on just so these know to my left hand side I'm coming off. So even though that there was no one coming out of this road, it did actually help those vehicles to the left because don't forget it's not just on the front corner, you have one in the mirror area, sometimes on the mirror, and one at the back corner as well. I'm going to take the next left, early signal for the one in front, and it can decide whether it wants to go or not. And my speed is the other absolute definitive signal for the DPD van, which was really the thing that allowed it to move out. It wasn't a signal. 
you shouldn't move off a signal. You should move when you know it's good. So, like I said, people do get wrapped up with these indications. So they're there to help, they're there to aid traffic flow. Um, I'm gonna aid traffic flow and position early for the Peugeot coming the other way. What's the flash mean? What does it, what does that mean? What does that mean? Poor driving, very poor. If he wasn't gonna complete his turn, what should he have done? Should have just held back. His indication also was a little misleading. I'm gonna turn right at the end. So I'm gonna tell people in enough time, this one behind's now got plenty of time to adjust what they're gonna to do to suit my turn. Edge and creep and lean. Yeah, we're all good. Holding back is again, the other signal to help that. So that last scenario, what I mean about that guy coming the other way, I'll try and explain a little bit more. If he knew he was going to turn into that driveway, which was after those parked vehicles on the left, and he could see vehicles coming the other way, he should have just held back and had given way or should have given way to me in that way. Um, going to where he went with the park ones then just narrows the space and I'm actually thinking he's going to continue that's why I held back so is that because he just signals each time that he goes into that road maybe but he should have done something differently that time because the vehicle's coming in the opposite direction no signal to move back in. I'm just going to hold back early and just let this uh, Mercedes go. No flash needed. If you do it early enough, people know like that. And I'm going to do the same here. There's no point legging it. No one's close behind. Just a fella taking his dogs for a run. Okay. So, moving out around park cars again. Again, no signal. We've got someone else. Looks as though their hazard lights are on. And like I said before, just remember, those hazard lights are a benefit if your car's invisible. If your car's not invisible, we can still see your car parked there. So they're absolutely irrelevant. Okay. So I'm just gonna drive around in circles as well. I'm not gonna go far. Um, the more I keep in these busier areas, the, the more we can see with this signaling. Let's just check all my cameras are still on. Yeah, we're all good. Um, that guy is um, taking a little bit of a risk for me. Um, he must do that quite a lot because um, his dogs do look quite well schooled. Um, it's not something that I would do, to be honest, but he must have confidence in what he's doing, but he does create a bigger risk for himself and other people. Um, excellent, notice what I did there as a signal. I started my car's engine by touching the gas pressure just a tiny little bit and I moved slowly. Right signal for the right turn, yes, does show people which way I'm going so they can start positioning. They know I'm going to be slowing to do the right turn, which is further away than the left. The left is a nearer turn that they've got to do. Brilliant, another emergency service. Um, do I need to even signal? No, I've done it with position again. No one's around me. No problems, and that beep is a um, way of them saying thanks as well as well as making themselves a little bit more aware. So this time I'm going to go ahead at the lights. Let's go in a different direction. Yeah, her signal that she was saying to me was um, she was slowing down and stopping. She's a little bit of a danger emerging with those vehicles that are in that right lane. So again, I'm just gonna be aware of this Corsa. These two to the right aren't signaling. They were traveling pretty quick, pretty close. Oh, the first stop line into the cycle area. So what are we expecting? How's your anticipation? Um, and again, if you're switched on enough, you can sort this out. So I'm going to use a little bit of my car's power to make sure I'm away and done. In the end, they didn't come this way, but could they have? Absolutely. Okay. I'm 
with the one signalling in front, which gave me plenty of time. It is a tiny benefit to me, um, its position close to the centre line and what it was doing. Did I need to warn the lady? I was just watching that lady to the right because her attention was obviously mainly with the bus. It's unlikely that she's just going to walk straight out from that central refuge, but I was always ready to warn. So that's how my signal, don't forget your horn is a signal, um, that's how my signal would have benefited. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use all the road space. There's two lanes, so we don't have to queue. Lady behind is quite impatient. Yeah, she is quite impatient. So I'm going to slow early and then roll away. So my signal there is the slowing of my car to actually fix that scenario and I'm going to be in charge of her. We have a merge situation, two lanes into one a bit further up. Again, it should be a um, merge in turn. So I'm just keeping up with this BMW to the left. Although the one series in front has zoomed off in front of the Ford, I'm now not going to make that space. That was how we'd all set up. So that's where I was going to stay. I'd only change where I think my position should be if someone was going to be particularly quick or particularly slow. Sound. So I'm going to turn right at this roundabout. I'm going to do a few more roundabouts. So the right signal on the approach, my um, position shown this course for everything at the minute. The right signal may just reinforce it, but again, position and speed with a the key there. This one in front, um, could it do with telling people? Could it do with telling me? No, because I can't go past it anyway. So if it turns left or turns right, it's irrelevant to me. But my right signal being put back on helps the uh, two white vehicles. The left one to come across again helps these know that I'm coming into this area so they have to delay their move away a tiny little bit is that something that you've ever thought about maybe not if it is a new thing think about it from now so i do need to signal here because there's cars in the outside lane i do want to make my way across to lane two because of the cyclist a little touch further up so it's not the fact that I'm moving, it was the fact um, I had to show those people from the outside, so it's not just when you need the... Um, I'm going to signal to come back in, just because it um, allows these cars behind to know if they're thinking of coming back in, where they can go. I might have stayed there, they might have come in earlier. It's people around, if there's people within overtaking range, a signal is often a good idea but again don't just do it routinely don't just do it at the same time for every single scenario what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through the lights obviously when they've changed and I'm gonna do a right turn a little touch further up to do that I'll need to find my way across to lane two so um, I'm not again going to put my signal on straight away. I'm going to look for the opportunity that suits the most rather than just putting it on at the same time all the time. It may be if there's vehicles coming past, I wait a little bit. Maybe that if someone's slow away in the queue, I decide to do it earlier. So again, I'm harping on about it today, but I'm trying to get the message across about these routine signals aren't good. So, no Bob and Toms, if you don't know what that is, boys on bikes, twits on motorbikes, could be vice versa as well. And just keeping aware of the traffic, this Subaru is slow, are they looking to go to the right lane? BMW's moved across, so there's my opportunity. Signal's on for two or three, and I'm making sure that the Ford in the outside lane isn't going to come back. So I just used my opportunity while I could before we got to the crossing. Perfect. The right signal for these traffic lights is really important, and I'm going to put it on now. How early is that? Would you have done that? But now what that does, although the one behind is following me and turning right, it allows other people behind, further back of that, to then not be stuck behind us turning right. So I'm thinking of the white van, and he's now 
moving across. So, just shows you, I was thinking of him before he was thinking of himself. Exit road's clear, no one coming. All good. And off we go. So that's an interesting one for me. Just remember that with right turns, that when you are putting a right signal on, it gives other people further back an opportunity to actually move away. So I'm gonna turn left at this roundabout. Signals for no one apart from cars coming out of that road. Yep, opportunity, gap, go. And I was mindful there not to straighten up fully to hold a little bit of left steer on so the signal stayed on as well. You can do that in certain situations. Um, like I said, being that aware of your signals is a skill that's often lost on everyone because going back to what I said earlier on, mirror signal maneuver, mirror signal maneuver. As long as I follow that, I'm all right. Hmm, might have got you through your test, but getting through the test is really basic. The skills that you need, really, um, are far beyond that. I think the test standard, personally, should be a little higher. Anyway, um, that last little stop, we've been followed closely by the uh, people carrier, so that's why I was so slow coming in, using my brake lights earlier. Um, I'm gonna do a right turn down, not at this set, but at the uh, next set further up. I'm watching all around, bobs and toms. Um, just noticed, took two hands off the wheel there. Um, yeah, it's not a massive thing. We're all cocooned in these safety devices, but sometimes just having at least one hand on the wheel may just give you a little bit of a brace, but Honestly, I'd rather fall into a nice airbag. Would the airbag go off if we got rear-ended though? Hmm, probably wouldn't. So there may still be a benefit of having at least one hand on the wheel, even when we're sat at lights. Pedestrian crossing phase is finished. And off we go. I moved early again to tell the Vauxhall, no, me, my turn. When am I gonna signal to put people in the picture of where I'm going. Well, I'm gonna do it now. I'm not going across the markings like most people would. And I'm just aware of that guy behind again. So I'm slowing him down to then create a little bit more space so I can make a smoother decision and flow. So be mindful when you're going into those um, protected right turns. You don't need to go across the markings. You shouldn't do. People often say, well, what if they're going over and someone behind is coming past? Well, wait, let them go past. It's not that complicated. And they go ahead at the roundabout, but because the roundabout is situated over there, I'm gonna treat this like a right turn. So a right signal. The guy behind has probably got the message of how I'm driving, that I'm not gonna be brushed or bullied or intimidated. Position of the Volkswagen's perfect. And then the left signal, yeah, it does help the pedestrians, helps the car behind. And my position is also starting to show people to where I'm going a little further. And where I'm going a little further, it's actually at the junction where the bus is, touch further up, is um, turning right. So I'm just aware of this impatient guy to the left. Uh, the white Kia turning is also something on my mind, so I'm just going to take my time, see if I can let the Kia finish, check into the left-hand side. And we've got enough room. When do I need the right signal? Well, I'm going to, again, put it on early in case people haven't noticed that it's a compulsory right turn. No issues. People crossing around the corner can sometimes be helped by a signal. So when people say it's a right turn only, you don't need to signal. That's again, a little bit black and white. Driving isn't black and white, it's gray. I'm gonna turn left at the lights. And do I really need to tell this one behind? I could do now. I'm just, and I probably would do now, but I'm just, giving this as an example that it doesn't have to be on at a set distance. How is it a benefit right at this moment to the car behind that I'm turning left? Now it is. 
because they've got enough time to then alter what they're doing to suit my turn. If I'd have gone straight on, the one behind was turning anyway, so I still had to have slowed down for the turn itself. Um, does that signal, oh, am I going to signal around the bus? No, I'm going to position. I'm not going to go. I'm just going to position. I'm going to position better than the Ford car. I'm not going to go around because they can't use the bus lane. Super. Again, no signal needed. No signal back needed. My position was absolute categoric of what I was going to do and uh, when I was going to do it as well because I didn't show any movement. So appreciate other people. Roundabout, I'm going to turn right. Yeah, I'm okay to glide round and just nip a little bit of that lane. Poorly designed road section, this. Right signal, again, it does help people behind know that they can get into the left-hand lane. Right signal may have helped people coming out of that road. So in theory there, may have got away with it. I'm not going to left signal. No one coming out of that road, no one in this. So just try to do that. Try to be specific with when you put your signals on with roundabouts. Try and see enough and actually see whether it's going to benefit anyone. Because then your level of observation is way up here. It has to be. Any of those things that I've talked about today new for you? Okay, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to turn left at the lights. The one behind, again, it's not really close. Lights are on red, I'm not. Uh, I'm going to put a signal on now just because, again, it gives the van behind an opportunity to use lane two and not have to slow down behind me. That was an important part there. And notice um, I stuck it on quite sharply as soon as we said we, we got to that situation to give him a chance as the road split up to then choose lane two, which has happened. Sitting with my foot on the foot brake this time. You've heard this before probably from me, but I'm repeating it for maybe viewers who are watching for the first time. Sit with your foot on the foot brake as a warning until the vehicles now arrive behind. And now you can. So my signal, is it helping people who are crossing that road? Could they see this front corner of the car? They absolutely could. The car or the van behind has had my signal on for age since they arrived so therefore they have an understanding of exactly what's what again I was just a little positive just to make certain that I was able to get to the corner Wow um, people's impatience is uh, is untrue there you go, look round corners for our people position here I don't need to indicate Plenty of time to complete it before the Volkswagen. Um, so always look really far, round corners, see things happening early. Uh, do I need to signal to split to lane two here? Absolutely not. As long as it's safe, as long as there's no one pushing down the other side. Would it be a benefit to oncoming cars to know who's maybe crossing their path? Potential. Again, it doesn't or it shouldn't cause the massive issues because I should be given away anyway. But if they're going to squeeze round those who are turning, they may know or need to know where I am. Nice signal by the private hire. Good. Gave me plenty of time to just back off and just do what I needed to do to accommodate their turn. And again, not being forced. Don't need to, it doesn't get you any further anyway. All right, is there anything signal-wise um, that you've picked up on? I've done a few different scenarios today. Um, what's been new? Is there any bits that you're going to take from what I've done and then trying to implement them into your driving? Um, is there any bits that you disagree with? Would you be signaling all the time? Have you been in that camp of I signal all the time, but I sort of now getting the idea of what Ashley's talking about? I'm turning right at this scenario. Didn't signal at that routine time because of the junction on the right. 
It helped the blue one off ahead as well because they then knew that it wasn't going to be going ahead into that road. No left signals required. You can treat that junction, it's a little bit strange, but you can treat it quite like a roundabout. Is he going to use the crossing? Just aware of him? No. So, what signal from him was I looking at? I was looking to see whether he was going to start to come across. Because this girl in the course is travelling a little close, I'm going to put my signal on earlier. Is that something that you would think about, or would you just again just put it on at the same time? Because she was following close, I'm just going to take my signal off for the golf just so it wouldn't be misleading. Um, so yeah, because she was close as well, I slowed early and controlled it. Do you change your driving that much in relation to people around? Or do you just get into that autopilot mode and just go and drive? I know the answer to most, most people with that question that I've just asked, and it's, it's autopilot. Have you always been like this with my driving? Absolutely not. Uh, what position have I just showed the uh, British gas fan? Is it British gas? Yes, it is. It's amazing how you pick up on things just from branding. But yeah, um, showed the British gas fan nice and early um, with a signal, but not these things. And hopefully that that's been an important part that's stuck with you from today, that those things are only just flashing lights. You shouldn't act off them anyway, you should be acting actually off what the car is doing. And that aids traffic flow more than these things. But people don't get it. They're obsessed with putting these things on. And what's been the biggest danger today? If I'd not signalled, I can't think of one. I absolutely can't think of one throughout all the time I've been driving around. I don't even know how long we're going. Can't even see. It's too bright. Can't see the clock on the camera. Um, but there's not been anything throughout this drive which would have caused danger if I hadn't have signalled. Let me know otherwise if you think. All right, I can't take all of it in and, and think of every single little bit, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But there's plenty of scenarios and plenty of situations which would have been dangerous if I hadn't have looked. And this is the message I'm trying to get across. Don't put these on as a sacrifice for looking. And that's how I'm going to wrap this up today. I hope that's been useful for everyone. Um, maybe giving you a different light. Like I said just a few moments ago, I haven't always been like this, and you won't get to that sort of level of observation instantly. It will take a fair bit of work unless you do this professionally. There's going to be people who are better at this than me. Of course there is. But it gives you a little insight on really advanced observational skills and that then allows you to signal correctly without misleading and if you put it on routinely there's going to be plenty of scenarios where it is misleading um, let's just deal with this too much going on for me to really talk and think now i'm moving a little to show the toyota nah sod off i'm going that's an important skill as well being positive now I've covered that in many of my other videos, but um, it was just a little too busy to, to sign off. So thank you very much for watching and all your support. I hope that's helpful. Try and implement some of those things if you can, and I'll see you soon.
Go on then, buddy. You're all right. 